Welcome everyone to another episode of the Cryptographic Asset Show. We are more than honored to be sitting down with Aza of the Vending Machines NFT. Thank you so much, Aza, for joining us today. Thank you very much, guys. Really appreciate this. Excited for it. So are we. So what in the world is a Vending Machines NFT? All right. So it is an NFT with great utilities. It's geared. I'm a businessman in the real world. So idea was to come together on the blockchain, form a franchise, right? And then, uh, and then a vending machine really opens a lot of opportunities for us because you can vend items, vend all kinds of um, clothes and wearables for it because we have aspirations to get into metaverse. So leading up to it uh, in a nutshell, right? But overall, um, it's basically a vending machine. And the idea is to generate passive income to its holders. So people are like familiar with art-based NFTs. They're less familiar, I think, with functional NFTs such as this. Can you explain like how NFTs can also be more than art and have function? Correct. And that was one, one of my main ideas uh, when I was doing this NFT. <clears throat> Excuse me. When it comes to NFT, as you just said, you're right. Uh, a lot of people relate to that token as, as an art. And, um, and rightly so, because a blockchain allows us to have some kind of a, uh, a track record of when that art was created, who created it, right? So uh, the real artist who created it and put it on a blockchain, they can have some kind of timestamp and something you know, that connects it to them. But when it comes to collection NFTs, when we are generating thousands of, uh, in a way, similar pictures with different traits, my belief and my idea was that collection NFTs should only bring benefits to its users, to its holders, right? Or investors, as I like to call them. In, uh, in this matter, and on a blockchain, once you make that NFT, which is basically a token, uh, you can also further create a utility, right? A benefit for its holders. Because blockchain technology allows us to, to, to track, for example, a wallet that is holding the vending machine NFT can can, we can use that wallet, right? And give it access to certain things. We can share uh, if we want in the future when we make coins, we can share with them. So overall, NFT is just a token. And when we're not an artist and we're trying to make an, um, a, 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 like me, for example, I'm trying to make community and organization online. Collection NFT is the best way to get a lot of people in, right? Because for example, our collection consists of 4,444 uh, images of vending machines with all kinds of different traits. So um, yeah, uh, when artists makes an art and puts it on the blockchain, right? They usually sell that and then all the funds go to artists. But when you make a collection NFT, my belief that the funds and the benefits should go to its holders, the investors. And by gathering this community, we can further right, uh, establish a DAO online, which is decentralized autonomous organization. Uh, in essence, a smart contract will be made and several people can have control over it. So basically it's an organization online that it doesn't depend on one person and it depends on a lot of people. And that's where NFT comes in, right? At a collection, because as the person owns it, their wallet can be tracked and we can really give them access to voting powers and really vote how we use the funds in our organization. What are some of the benefits that holders get? I see you have, I believe, uh, 4,444 of these uh, Venn machine NFTs. Yep. And what are some of the benefits that the community receives? Yes, sir. So benefit is the biggest part of, of, of my uh, movement with this collection. At the first as soon as they buy this NFT, which uh, in, in NFT world, you call it mint, initial buying. As soon as they mint this NFT, they're going to start receiving dividends, right? We have minters rewards reflection, meaning every mint sale coming in, 10% from that will be split evenly to the already, vented, already minted vending machines. So uh, to, to kind of simplify it, investors return of investment starts as soon as they mint this NFT, a 10% reflection. So in a way, it's like a rebate. Going forward, we have built our own marketplace. It's like OpenSea. We are on Avalanche. So uh, Avalanche Network really allows us uh, low gas fees and fast 
network allows us to do that, which is uh, we are sharing royalties from the sales of our vending machines, right, on the secondary market. So besides the, the re little rebate that they got, going forward, any sale volume is happening on our marketplace, 1.5% of it is going back to the holders. So that is the second part of the utility of having this. The first one was the rebate. This one is just continuous little change coming into you as sales happen on the marketplace. And our biggest benefit or biggest utility of this project is that we have um, plans to build our own metaverse, similar to Sandbox and Decentraland, but on Avalanche Network. And when we establish our own metaverse, at that time, the investors of vending machine will own a land in metaverse, right? They'll get a land for free. So this is the biggest utility that we are bringing to the vending machine uh, uh, investors. What is like, and what is what do NFTs signify to you? You obviously are excited about their technology. You're an entrepreneur in the space now, but when you first learned about them and understood them, what significance did NFTs have to you? Oh no, oh no, NFT is just token right on the blockchain and, and I'm very, very, you know, how can I say, intrigued by the blockchain technology. First and foremost, uh, as I mentioned earlier, it, it shows timestamp, right? It shows some kind of proof of something being um, made at certain time. Um, those who are NFT space, whenever you have, for example, NFT collection, you can see when it was minted. And certain NFTs that have never been put on sale have higher value compared to the other, right? So the, the part where you can actually have a timestamp and see when something was created in the long run, this can have some kind of a nostalgic uh, effect to it, right? And secondly, <clears throat> blockchain allows us to make it autonomous, meaning when you form a business in real world, you still depend on central banks. You still depend on someone going to the bank and say cashing their check, for example. But with blockchain, what we can do is we can write smart contracts, basically automate it, and the investors can withdraw their funds whenever they want. So that aspect of blockchain uh, really excites me. And the NFT collection part is what is a, you know basically a utility or a way for us to bring a lot of people together. Uh, as a businessman, I know how business works. I have some network, right? I have funds. But at the same time, I understand there are a lot of beautiful and smart people or could be people with, you know, more funds or bigger network, right? And it just the life is, right? You, you might have money, but you may not have network. You might have network, but may not have the means or idea to do it. But with NFT, NFT collection, we can bring a lot of people together, right? And then with all these smart and beautiful people, we can create an entity on the blockchain and run business. But what blockchain and NFT collections really allow us to do is to be transparent. It allows us to share the funds with ease. Like I said earlier, you don't have to depend on the bank, just a matter of few clicks and you can get the funds you want. And again, in a nutshell, it allows you to be transparent. It allows you to bring a lot of people together uh, because when you are selling one NFT, basically just one person, right? When you make a collection, you can get a community going. Um, so, so those are a few things, right? So the transparency and being able to do things online with more autonomous and more uh, easier way for and really utilize the decentralized part of the blockchain for our benefit. Can you speak a little bit about the metaverse? Like you're going to, you want to build your own metaverse. What in the world is the metaverse? Sure, sure. Um, simply said, there are a lot of galleries that you call a metaverse, right? Uh, if you think of a game, any game that you have played, let's say Fortnite. Fortnite is also in a way is a metaverse, right? But it's just a, it's a digital world. Simply said, metaverse is a digital world. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to build a digital world. And with the help of smart contracts, that digital world, right, or a game or amusement park uh, can be put on the internet, on the blockchain, right? And then you can go on the browser or an app 
and actually go inside that little digital world. Um, to, to explain it in a broader term, right? We had three years ago, COVID started and that kind of pushed us away from our offices and schools and things like that. And, and this metaverse really uh, hyped up because there are schools, for example, on a, in digital world, that is the metaverse that people can actually log in on their computer, but that a digital figure of them is walking around in that school, right? They can go in, sit down and, and really take classes. There are a lot of offices set up, um, you know, digital office on the blockchain in the metaverse and people go in attending and going to work in that space. So it's basically a digital world online and, and then the possibilities are limitless. Uh, you can build, for example, a sandbox. Uh, on the sandbox, you know, people are building things like amusement park. You can build games on it, uh, play to earn games, right? You can do things and, 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 and really earn coins or, or another cryptocurrency that can later you can swap them into, um, you know, fiat money. But again, you know, to simplify, it is basically a digital world online. But what's exciting for us and with our vending machines is that in those worlds, since it's digital, you can create, um, you know, the hottest thing right now is uh, wearables. You can purchase a wearable NFT and your figure, your digital figure in that world can have, for example, different color hoodies or different type of hoodies. So just even creating the wearable and loading this up with our vending machine, in our vending machine, and people can come and vend that item and change their clothes is just one of the possibilities that we can have. Uh, going forward, we can also, uh, in, you know, we, we are already speaking with some people developing a Sims type of game on the metaverse. And our vending machines are going to vend items like energy potions and things like that for, for the, to, to get the game going, right? It's a game, something like Sims, you are, your individual is going to work and they earn some money, right? Digital money. And with that money, they can buy more energy. So now they get stronger. Now they can work more, right? Things like this can be developed. Basically, whatever you have in this world can be put on the metaverse. Even further, you can, um, thinking about real estate, the real estate is also big on the metaverse. You can create a metaverse with uh, cells and coordinates, and you can actually tie it to a real real estate in the world, right? And then the, the sale can happen on the blockchain, but you owning the land in the real world is, 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 is right around the corner, right? We're almost there. We can get that going, and hopefully we can simplify the process of buying house for other people. So again, metaverse can start from just augmented reality of a gallery. You just go in, you post your picture, you can walk around and see your pictures. And as far as developing a whole Sims type of game in it that you can play or even amusement park. Also uh, like Snoop Dogg is big in metaverse Some people probably have seen it. You can hold private parties in your metaverse, right? Basically you're building a digital let's say a club and then only people who are holding certain nft right and then again going back to your previous question nfts in the wallet this is how you can actually make a community out of it and and have some kind of access to people who hold it to, through smart contracts you can allow them entrance to your party and then they can party there whether it's a meeting or things like this so the possibilities are very uh like wide open uh, this is all new and going forward, I'm pretty sure, you know, a lot of uh, companies will be going towards that, leaning towards that. You can even think of fashion, right? Displaying fashion. Uh, we have also that in works, talking with um, different clothing brands to display their clothes on our vending machines, right? And then we can further gen generate contracts and ma make it so that you can come into the metaverse, you can go into our vending machine. It's like a marketplace, right? You select the hoodie you want and you can actually try them on, right? While you're in it and then make that purchase and then the company will just ship it to you. So the, those kind of possibilities are what we are trying to explore. There's a lot to unpack there. I'm curious, uh, before we get into some of the that, 
especially like how vending machines NFT will work in your future metaverse and, and how it'll work now a little bit more. Cause I think it's really interesting for people to kind of wrap their heads around uh, the mm -hmm. possibilities with NFTs as much as possible. I'm curious, could you explain what Sandbox is? Yes, Sandbox is, <clears throat> it started as a game many years ago. Now on, on uh, you can purchase it through their website or on OpenSea. It, they have made basically a big world and it has cells in it and coordinates. So we as community, we have bought a land on Sandbox and our land coordinates are, um, I'm sorry here, 72, I'm sorry, 26, um, 23 minus 76. Uh, this is our coordinate. So basically you buy the NFT with those coordinates. So now you have the NFT with those coordinates. Then when you go on their website, you'll see a map. And then on that map, you can see where your coordinate is. And that is your little length. Now, and um, they have sizes, uh, you know, one by one, three by three, nine by nine, and you can go as far as you want. And then how you, are people utilizing it now? Currently, people buy the land and then they can post their picture on it, advertising picture. Right, so when you look at the map, you'll see that picture, right? And uh, so that's one way of advertising yourself. Another thing people developing is a game. So when you de develop a game or you develop a little club or um, even a gallery, you can do it in your land only, right? So once you own the land, then you can develop it. And then uh, Sandbox is still, kind of you know in the process of making it easier to get in currently you, you will need to use a portal to go into it kind of but let me let me kind of make it easier for people let's say there's a neighborhood and you can buy a plot of land plot of land from there hello i'm sorry i my phone went crazy yeah no problem okay what, what can you do with that plot of land anything and everything you can build amusement park that people can come and just play around, right? It's, it's basically a little, little digital humans, 3D humans walking around where, or, or animals. It's still at the very early stages and new stages, right? So for example, one thing that we want to build it, on the, we, we, are, we are on Avalanche Network and our ambition is to build our own sandbox type of metaverse on Avalanche. Right, it's still in the work in the process. But going back to sandbox, now we have we bought a land. What do we want to do with it? Currently, we want to develop a little plaza with the land we have. It's going to be basically like an art gallery type. But our idea is to bridge Ethereum people to Avalanche. Avalanche is a newer blockchain. It's still developing. It's still new. But we love it. We are big on Avalanche. Avalanche, we believe, has a huge future. Ethereum is still hard for new people to get in because of the gas fees. Gas fees are very high. So we want to bridge people to Avalanche. So with our land, what we plan to do is set up a little plaza that when people come into it, they will see different advertisements and information about our project, about Avalanche Network, and really how they can bridge over from Ethereum to Avalanche. So currently we're planning to use it as kind of a billboard advertisement space. But as I said earlier, you can build, uh, like for example, Snoop Dogg, what he has is he build a big club, right? Just like a real club you go into. It has music, it has the lights and everything and the little digital things in it, you can dance, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> um, another option is, um, we've seen that and there's big demand for it. You can build a casino in it, right? So it's basically just like you go into any casino, same thing here. You go into it and it has tables, roulette tables and things like that, and you can play it. How does it benefit the investors though, right? What is the idea behind it? It's just fun and games, but people want money. How do you monetize it? Well, when you are, let's say, making up a casino, setting up a casino, 
you can make it that people use your token, the coin that you created, right? So now they're transferring or exchanging their Ethereum or fiat money into your coin, right? So that's how the value is going to generate in your coin as well. Um, I think I'm kind of going everywhere here. I'm too passionate. I can just keep talking about it. But again, to simplify it, uh, you can make it as an advertising spot. You can make it as a just fun, your gallery spot, or you can really gamify it by installing games into it, like even casino, and really capitalize from all the volume that is happening there. Can you speak to the Avalanche blockchain and what, what benefits it has? Yes. So there are a few, right? Um, new blockchains that are coming out, Solana, Phantom, and Avalanche. What we love about Avalanche is the time to finality, meaning the time it takes to process a transaction is the fastest. So on a blockchain, it being fast is crucial. So number one is the fastest. Number two, their gas fees are cheap, very cheap. For example, on Ethereum, if you want to send money to someone, gas fees are from anywhere from $10 to $20, $30. So in essence, you want to send someone 20 bucks, it's going to cost you close to $40. On Avalanche, if you want to send funds to someone, it's going to cost you maybe 10 cents, maybe 6 cents, right? So the gas fee is very low, which allows you and helps newcomers to get into it easily. Right, the entry point is very low. For me though, the main part that I, I got into Avalanche maybe three months ago, and I really, really got deep in it and I wanna develop here because <clears throat> due to all the possibilities it creates, it's bringing a lot of smart and very innovative developers to this blockchain. And that as an investor, as a businessman, excites me and gives me good assurance that it has a very, very bright future. At the same time, um, if we talk about, you know, uh, play to earn games or staking your NFTs to earn things, every time you stake, unstake or claim them, there are gas fees associated with it. And then, as I said, on Ethereum, they are very high. On Avalanche, they're very low. It allows you a much uh, higher engagement rates that allows you more and more things you can do with it. Uh, right now, DeFi and gamifications on Avalanche are just going crazy. There's just every day so many of them coming up because the blockchain really allows you to capitalize on everything that smart contracts allows us to do, which is staking, generating, and then you can just keep generating tokens. And in the long run, people can really capitalize on their investment. NFTs came out of nowhere and in 2021 really took the crypto industry, the blockchain industry by storm and quickly also, I guess, became a foundational aspect of the metaverse. We saw NFTs also be theorized for use in play to earn games, work to earn games, I guess, labor to earn games, et cetera. So can you maybe speak to the evolution of the NFT, like the history of the NFT? Some people posit the beginning back at Kalu's colored coins way back in the day on the Bitcoin blockchain. Then yep. there was crypto kitties. There was also uh, in 2018, the Los Angeles Dodgers gave out a physical NFT and uh, it was a paper wallet based NFT, I would say, at one of their games. So can you speak to the evolution and history of the NFT at all? Yes, um, NFT being a right non-fungible token, really, um, if you look at Ethereum, Ethereum is also a token. However, one Ethereum is one Ethereum. And when it comes to NFT, it being non-fungible, one, one, number one NFT is not equal to number two NFT because you might have different traits. And um, really one of the pioneers in making generative collection um you know we can say there's few but the really og is crypto punks they really showed us and put it together how you can really uh, generate and make a collection now 
in uh, and, and last year it really really picked up the collection part of it till then it was more so art or uh to the point we spoke earlier like you said the dodgers right they gave out the physical one um really you can have the nft and then you can go somewhere and scan it and go in and <clears throat> make it like a like a entrance type of thing but to, to kind of answer your question last year collection nft really picked up because that is a really way of bringing community together and 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 raising funds right because you can make ten thousand of it and you can sell it say 200 300 people buy ten thousand of it you know it's, it's a huge chunk you can really get together also a way of getting a lot of people in on that note i would like to mention also that i personally believe as, as i said earlier collection nfts should only benefit its its investors right we i'm like for example i'm a businessman i'm not an artist i'm not drawing a beautiful art right even though our machines are beautiful i love it but it's not a beautiful art that i draw myself that that i'm the artist and putting it out there right we generated this we, we okay we had an artist who built and we generated this and many projects unfortunately are using this in a in the wrong way because it is easy way to generate funds and in the last year we had a huge uptick with it uh, especially with success of even board ABI clubs um, i mean they went crazy uh with their with their floor price and then really brought people in at the end of the day people see nft as a money maker and uh, a lot of projects are using it for good by generating that capital and then really following up with the plans they have and creating the platforms for people to earn money. Um, for example, on, on that aspect, let me speak on one project on the Avalanche Network. So a few months ago, they, they, the NFT dropped. Uh, it was just chicken NFT, talking about the gamification of it. And then, um, and then three months later, right? This is what I mean by team really working and bringing something. Three months later, they um, made egg token. So chickens lay egg, right? And then, so we got the egg token. Now you can stake your egg token. It generates feed. You take the feed and you feed your chicken. Your chicken gets bigger, it lays more egg. And you keep repeating the process. In the back end, what basically what you're doing is you, you've invested money into NFT. So now your NFT has a certain value. You put that value, you stake that value, it generates you another coin, right? And, and, and collection NFTs really allow you to bring engagement because without engagement, without a lot more money coming into it, right? Without liquidity going up, it's hard for the token or the project to keep going. Um, again, so um, maybe I have a hard time answering this, but it really helps you to bring community together and generate funds to do all those beautiful things. And, and I think that's what a lot of businessmen or developers really saw last year with the success of Board ABI Club, I want to say, and other NFTs. They really ran with it, right? They really ran that, okay, we can do this. So on that note, um, for people who are listening to me, I would like to say, there are a lot of projects coming out. They all may sound great, but please do your research. Talk to the owners, talk to the project leads, the project developers, see what they're saying, see what their goals are. Because this collection NFT is a beautiful way and a great way to bring a lot of people together and raise funds to do projects. But at the same time, it op it's opening the door for a lot of bad apples to, to give you hope and then get your money and run with it, right? So, but I guess, again, to simply say, last year, people saw opportunity with investing into NFT. A lot of people do not understand how it works. But for the project owners, it's the idea of bringing people together, generating funds for the, for the public. It's, a, it's an opportunity for them to buy something at, let's say, at one, and then tomorrow, a week later, sell it at 5x, right? five times the price they, they, they bought it for. That's the hope they have. That's the intention they have. And this is how I think last year, what, what really resonated with people. And then they started dropping, you know, NFT collections left and right, basically, you know, so. But yeah, it's just, it's a way of generating funds and generating community. 
for artists out there who are really interested in putting their artwork on chain or, or uh, paying it to a chain through the NFT, what tips would you get for a beginner NFT artist or project to get started? That's a very good question. Um, it is hard to start up in the sense that it is hard to be accepted by people. Um, and then that is due to some bad apples at the same time due to so many other projects coming up. When it comes to NFT, still a lot of people look at how the art looks, right? The art still matters. They want to see what it looks like. So having a beautiful art already is a good start for the, um, for the upcoming artist. Now, when it comes to promoting it, Twitter should be, you know, their, their best friend. NFT space lives on Twitter. Twitter is the way where everybody goes and sees. So my first suggestion would be to set up Twitter and be very active on it, right? Be always posting, updating, letting people know what you want to do. Slowly, you'll start gathering people. As you have more people in the NFT space, Discord is the second best friend. This is where you can really put your community together and communicate with them. As you set up Discord, again, same thing there. You want to be active. You want to be sharing with people what you want to do. As you are on, on, on a Twitter space, you, there will be a lot of people messaging you to promote. Um, just be very careful and pick and choose who you want to promote with. But um, this is the also way of promoting it through Twitter with uh, big Twitter names and Twitter handles or who are big in NFT. <clears throat> but when it is not a collection, when it is art, it's really, really matters. If your art is really good, it's going to sell, right? It's just a matter of you getting to know. Uh, also, I would suggest to use, for me, it really worked well. You know, uh, you want to go out and get either a marketer or if they know it themselves, Google, Google ads. Google ads is what's really going to bring them. And the reason I'm saying Google ads and a little bit more is needed from an artist, because when you are doing a collection, it's easier to gather a community and people will follow. But uh, because you have 10,000 of it, right? Or 5,000 of it. When the artist makes, I don't imagine it's going to be in thousands. So it's limited. So right, obviously the, the public or, or, or following could be limited. But again, Twitter is the place to go. Be active on Twitter. Uh, Twitter spaces, which is, uh, you, you can talk on it, right? You can hold AMAs. This is very big. Uh, set up your own Twitter spaces, like announce it a few days ahead and then set it up. Uh, leading up to it, you know, put up some tweets leading up to it, reminding. And at the same time, go to other spaces, join them. Do not be shy. Request to speak. When you request to speak, Usually your, your icon or your account will be up top. So more people, you'll be exposed to more people. More people can see your account and maybe follow you and go from there. But really going into Twitter spaces and talking about your project, your vision, your passion goes a long, long way. When people hear you and, and then they, they can resonate and relate to you much better, it builds trust and, and, and people really love and excited and like to ask questions and find out more about the project. So yeah, just, you know, make sure your art is great. Make sure you're on Twitter, always posting and join the uh, Twitter spaces and do not be shy and talk up. There's a lot of good information there. So I'm kind of curious, like what, how do you uh, engage on Twitter in the NFT space? So are you just like posting about your project or are you getting in there and like maybe commenting to people and uh, helping them understand this craze? Like, what's your secret to Twitter? Yes, commenting on other popular people's tweets. Um, yes, one, you always want to keep your Twitter active. What I do, for example, every four hours or so, I post something, right? Whether it's update, whether it's just letting community know, whether if we're doing some giveaways. So be very active with <clears throat> posting. When you have following, it already is going to help because your following is going to like it and retweet it. So it will help you generate exposure. When you have less following, yes, go to other people's tweets and post there, retweet it, quote, retweet it, use hashtags, 
And again, really join those spaces and have your icon, your you know account up there so people can click and see you. But but yeah, usually uh, go into you know you go and post something. Let's say you post your beautiful art. People will see that. Um, they may not answer or they may not comment below it, but they'll hit the like button if they really like the art, right? Or they'll hit the retweet button. So really, as an artist, you want to excite them with your beautiful art. You want to keep it up with, with continuous uh, activity. And for the exposure, you just want to keep going to another Twitter account and, and just keep commenting on them. As you comment, people see it, and, and hopefully your beautiful art can um, you know, drive them to, to your website or to your Twitter page or to your collections. And then how are you growing, for instance, Discord? How do you grow your Discord uh, chat? So um, there are people who offer you all kinds of marketing and, and ways to do that. They want to shill it. Um, so to those who are starting up, be very careful with that. Uh, they don't always bring you good people. They bring you uh, robots. Uh, again, I'm so passionate about it. I always like to let people know of the, of the wrong way to not do it. Best way to do is you want to collaborate with other projects. You go to other projects, uh, Discord, you reach out the moderator or the admin, you talk with them, you prepare a, a shill material, a post about your project with a picture and a link to your Discord. And then usually on Discord, what happens is they will post your information and you will post their information and you can set up a bot in the Discord and you wanna give away something, right? Whether it's a whitelist bot, whether it's a free NFT, whether you're giving discount on that NFT and things like this. But collaboration with other projects is the best way because this is what will bring you real people who are curious, who will come in. Whether they'll stick or not, then it's up to you, right? By being active and really engaging with community, answering their questions. But that is the best way to bring real people in, in your door. Second, you want to uh, do giveaways and contests on Twitter as well. And when you do that, you put requirements. They need to tag friends. So that helps you to promote your Twitter page. And they need to join your Discord, right? So you put those requirements. And let's say you're giving away, even if you give away, say, $100, you'll see a lot of engagement. Uh, again, another note, when you do those, be careful not to have high hopes on those people who came in just to win the hundred dollars because there are a lot of people who just want to win the hundred dollar and they'll have a zero effect on your project and on your community but that is a way of bringing excitement and bringing people in right at a hundred there could be five six people who really okay they want the money but also maybe they'll be interested with your art but you can create the hype so collaborations with other projects on the discord um, staying active in Discord and talking and, uh, you know, they're trivia bots. You can make games do, uh, throughout, you know, let's say every other day. Uh, you can do um, all kinds of giveaways there on, on it. Uh, fun games, anything, right? There's tons of bots you can create, you can do. There are tons of things online you can utilize as a game. For example, I, I, I set up uh, tests, quizzes on Kahoot. And, and I ask questions there about the project or about the latest updates. You know, you set up five, 10 questions, people can go in and then really tells you who won and then the winning person can get something, right? So you wanna engage them with little giveaways. You wanna engage them with you being active, answering all the questions. You wanna collaborate and then you wanna also drive traffic through your tweets to your Discord. Any other tips for people who are looking to like launch their own NFT project, whether they're an artist or a project? So <clears throat> it's hard times. I get them by me doing it myself. I understand it. This is so new that even Google doesn't know, right? Ironically, and it's funny that even Google doesn't know. I would say when you join, again, those Twitter spaces are huge. When you join them, uh, you know, you can't even see marketing, right? Put in NFT marketing and then the space comes up. Before you commit, before you launch, really, really listen to other NFT people. Also, when you join Discords, right? 
with time, really spend time and listen to what people are saying and talk to them. On Google, there's not much information. The best information you can get from experience that people already had and that they're sharing. So Twitter spaces, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm beating a dead horse here, but this is the best way because you get to hear people who are already doing it. You get to be, hear their experiences, right? You get to uh, uh, see what they're going through so you don't make the mistake. Um, and also, if they're not a developer, really make sure you, you vet your developer and you, you, you understand, you see their credentials, you see their past work because you do not want to start it and then be stuck because it's out of your hand. It's, it depends on the dev and you got a bad dev and now they delay things for you or don't get things done on time. So be very careful with that. Um, on, in NFT space, biggest thing is, and, and, and this, you, this word is used a lot and kind of people, uh, they, they understand it, they may not understand, but FOMO, right? Fear of missing out. This is huge. Um, my, my suggestion would be on that part, do not rush it. You're not missing out. You will have time. If your art is good and you believe in your art, just believe in yourself, take your time. Build the community, build trust. Then you can get a nice dev. Then you can put it up on the blockchain. Then you can start selling, right? So before you even display, right? Is if you're making art, your your picture, you can share that on on, on Twitter, right? It doesn't have to be on the blockchain. Um, so again, shortly, I would say, do not rush. Build a community first. Have a following. Vet your dev, and then and then launch and then put it on the blockchain. Uh, still, things gonna happen. This is life. We we learn from the mistakes, so that will happen. But no reason to rush. You're not missing out. This NFT is still at the very, very early stages. And with time and with patience, we can all be successful. So that would be my, that would be my suggestion. What else do people need to know about vending machines NFT? Vending machines NFT, what I would like to say is, and, and my community that I have already, uh, is, is great and they understand it and they see that it's a long-term. Main thing I want people to know about vending machine is that it's not just an NFT drop. No, we are about forming a community, doing projects together. For example, we are about to drop vending machine hats NFT. It's basically hat NFT with different traits, but the art has been done by a member of our community. He's a guy, he, he minted, he got in. I was talking to him, I saw some of his art. Then I started to him in private and we got the collection ready. So a vending machine is a community. It's not just NFT drop. And with community, we will be doing more NFT projects together. And in the long run, we will develop the metaverse. And in the metaverse, it's gonna open up a lot of op doors of opportunities for us. And we'll be capitalizing on that. So, you know, main thing I would want for people to see is that it's not just NFT drop, it's bigger than that. We wanna establish a business entity on the blockchain and then franchise the blockchain. <clears throat> Anything else in conclusion that you wanna tell people about vending machines NFT? Um, <clears throat> no, uh, just, hey, um, you uh, vending, Items have been going on since 1800s. You were able to vent postcards back then. And nowadays you can even vent cars through Carvana in the real world. So the possibilities of us utilize the vending machines in the metaverse is huge. We have great ideas and great plans, but hey, anyone out there listening, I'm sure you have a great idea or some kind of vision. Join us on Twitter and Discord, share it with us. We would love to hear it and maybe we can do things together. We've had the honor of sitting down today with Ava of Vending Machines NFT. Thank you so much, Ava, for sitting down with us today. Thank you very much, Justin. I really appreciate this. Pleasure's all mine. And thank you, everyone, for listening. Thank you.